Welcome back to our Survivor 41 podcast. We are here with everybody except Alex. Alex and Fanguy had the last two picks and the last two picks went home. <laughs> but overall, I already said my spill on the channel. So let's hear your guys' view on the first episode. Whoever wants to go first. I'll speak up because I lost one member of my team. Um, you know, I, I actually thought the guy Alex had, he was my pick as first boot. I don't even know why I didn't claim it last time. I just had a bad feeling about him. So when Alex took him second to last, I was like, yeah, I don't got the guy who I think is going to get first boot. Uh, but then my girl got the first boot too. Um, it was a good episode, you know. Uh, there's a lot of interesting relationships forming between a lot of these people. And uh, I think it'll be cool to see how it all plays out. Did anybody else like halfway through be like, wait, who the fuck is Abraham? Yeah. The, the second he said it on the boat, because I don't remember people's last names. The second he said it on the boat, I'm like, is this guy straight up lying about his name? That's so <laughs> extra that and unnecessary. But then yeah. I, my sister's like, it's his last name. I'm like, oh, okay. Then like, I, I'm just, I didn't know about that one. I knew about Chantel going by Shan and uh, Jairus going by JD, you know, but I didn't know it, Eric was going to go by Abraham and it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> True. Exactly. I'm just now, honestly, I'm just now catching that, so that's why I look confused. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Huh. Meg, ask me what your guys' thoughts on the episode. Uh, Meg, you wanna you wanna take the lead on this? Um, I feel like it went pretty quick. Uh, everybody was like doing a lot like right away, and it was kind of a lot to follow with the three different tribes and still getting used to like who people are. They're also half of them going by like nicknames. So I was constantly like referring back to the notes that I took during our, you know, draft to like, okay, who's okay. I see this person. So what tribe is this that I'm looking at and like, what's going on? So there, it was just really overwhelming. I also want to ask, like, do these people just like, they go to the hotel and they're like, okay, now it's time to go. And we got to get on the boats right now. And you don't have time to change. Like, why do they constantly show up to live on an Island in the most inappropriate clothing? Production it's has like, crazy. you, you submit a bunch of clothes that you will wear and production will pick from them. So they don't really get a, they, they'll put you, if you're a business person or a lawyer, they'll like usually give you like a suit jacket because it fits into your character archetype. And lately okay. they haven't I mean, been giving them sense. like swim, they haven't been giving them like swimsuits because for some reason they decided they don't want to do that anymore. I was just like, who shows up to live on an island for a month in like this really uncomfortable dress? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I um uh, kind of piggybacking off what Meg said. It was a lot to follow. Like I, I didn't even smoke through the episode just because I'm like what the fuck is going on you know like I was gonna be too confused so um it was a lot I took some notes but honestly they're not great notes and um I feel like my people are doing great I feel like my people are doing great I'm I'm feeling great you know my people doing great I feel like we we in there I wish I kind of would have got Mike's girl because I ain't gonna lie she my favorite uh Which, Shan, Shan yeah yeah Shan yeah she she kind of emerging as my favorite right now um I still don't really understand like what the um trick is at, at tribal council like you can go up and like shoot your shot like I don't know I didn't I didn't get that part so maybe y'all can explain I was a little confused too like can can they do it whenever? Can they only do it one time? I was confused if they could do it once or more times. Yeah, the, our whole family was confused on that, and I never got, like, a solid answer. But I interpreted it as you get, like, one dice. You get one shot in the dark. Because otherwise, I feel like more people would have used it. Yeah. If you could, if you rolling it, it every time. <laughs> <laughs> Your vote. I mean, I, I, I don't like this twist. If we're just going to touch on general things, I don't really care for this at all. It, it, it is just like to create good TV moments, but I, I don't, I don't really like it as a concept because it really, I don't know. It kind of keeps the people on the bottom in the bottom unless, oh, a miracle, you get a 16% and there's going to be more split votes and more chaos, but not in like a natural way. It's because of production doing this whole dice thing. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a weird twist to throw in there for me. Um, and then, like, he also was talking about 
an advantage being at at the challenge did I miss that like why they keep showing the side of the okay it's game within a game did you not look it up I scoured the internet (laughs) it's for like kids and puzzles and stuff well I did it I did the puzzle I did it too (laughs) (laughs) like kids at the candy store right right because I was like, wait, 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 what was that? Did you see that? I looked at my husband. I'm like, what? Did you see that thing? It's a clue. But I like couldn't find like the picture of it again. Did you not go to the website? Um, I tried and I did it. Couldn't find anything. Finally, it like uh, popped up on Twitter and I was like, okay. Okay. And I, that's how I found the website. I didn't like, it didn't register in my brain quick enough when it came up to like go to that web address. <laughs> Like when I, well, I was focusing on the picture, I wasn't looking at the web address and then it went away and I was like, what the hell was that? Yeah, I, I liked it. It was just a funny little word puzzle. I kind of, I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, it's fine. I kind of like some of the things they've done with showing, not being afraid to show like the cameras behind the scenes sometimes and stuff. I'm not sure I'm a fan of like the dramatic slow motion shots all the time, you know, just little things. That guy or my what was the other power? The I didn't really follow that one either. The one they hit at the camp. The one that they showed Jeff sticking into a tree. Yeah. I don't think they told us what it was, just that it was a power that can have a downside. Okay. I, I didn't get any, they didn't, as far as I know, tell us what it was. I just thought it was an idol. Yeah, me too. It was an idol. It was something else. It was, it was a beware advantage, was Jeff's words. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know. Carl was right in front of it. <laughs> oh man, Tiffany. Oh. <laughs> uh, that was not like intentionally, but I feel like the camera people can tip people off to where stuff is sometimes. It's like you're wandering around the wilderness and no one's following you, and all of a sudden you go to this one area. True. And you got two cameramen fucking swooping in different angles, like how <laughs> one. They're like, don't you want to look there? Look there. Exactly. What's in there? That's so that's I, didn't, I didn't get why she didn't get it because I'm like they showing you right where it's at. How don't you see this? She's that's like, how uh, right in front of me because <laughs> the cameras are right there. <laughs> that's how way back when uh, Russell found his idols is he would he would use the cameramen like he would just watch what they were doing, and he even used like the light from their cameras in like the morning so he could search when it was dark. So you could definitely use production to your advantage. I'm sure they, they do their best, I'm sure, to not make it too obvious. Do they? I'm sure sometimes they want certain people to find out. Like Ben. They wanted Ben to win that fucking season. I'll never get over exactly, it. So. Exactly. Exactly who I was thinking of. Exactly. I'm sure they wanted Tiffany to find that too because it's, they, don't, they don't want people like Tiffany to be the first outs because it's not as exciting for them. True. I mean, she have nothing to worry about. She's more. I mean, even homegirl voted for her, which threw. Oh no, that was that was Sarah. That was Sarah. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up. Oh God. Well, let's get to our rankings first. We're gonna go over the bottoms, the people that didn't even make the top ten. Our official bottom three this week are Nasir, Sydney, Heather. And I hate to break the mic, but Heather is the only person in nobody's top 10. So just so you know. I mean, I didn't even put her in the top 10. So how could I complain? What she didn't like do anything. I mean, yeah, she I avoided know. tribal, but that wasn't her. <laughs> Any thoughts on these three? I mean, I, I ranked Nasir. I put him eight or nine. I mean, I didn't think it was a terrible episode for him. Yeah, I put him um, number nine. I mean, I think it, I think it was. I think he did a bad job at like uh when he was like, I guess trying to get the dudes out who just did the challenge. I came in like 20 minutes late to the episode, but uh, I came in and he's like, well, Nasir got to go since he's trying to get us out. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is not interesting. He caught like- the guys like idol hunting yeah. and immediately ran and told um, Sydney and who else? Erica. 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 And then Sydney immediately turned around and told the guys that Nasir had told her that. Okay. Okay. Thumbs, thumbs down to Sydney. I don't. I don't like it when people do that. I, I mean, eh, but yeah, yeah but I mean, it's kind of like a rat out for a rat like, out. Like final four. Let's do final four. And I'm like, you're making a final four. You're like two hours in, bro. Right. Right. It's, Calm it's down. Four for Team Fan guy because I got the two. <laughs> 
that are going like one of the i got nasir and one of the people he's trying to get out so uh this doesn't end well for me but at least i know it'll end well for one of my two um, but probably not for the other i didn't like how sydney did that either because uh, I, I think nasir was actually trying to be like legit like and just tell him hey yo i just saw these dudes they're supposed to be getting us supplies and instead they're searching for idols like bro like he was doing the right thing and she turns around and do you think that sydney would have told them had they not finished the challenge that's what i was just gonna say i think had they not actually finished the challenge then maybe not but since they did why not i guess i mean it wasn't like nasir lied though that's my thing is like don't throw him under the bus for telling you like the truth <laughs> Because then the guys might run to Nasir and tell them that you told them, and then they're gonna and then they're gonna run to Nasir and or wait, I just said that, but it, it just creates this circle of of like bullshit. Just like at the first stop, just just don't just hold some information to yourselves. I mean, my God, <laughs> Aspen, do you think the sped up game is why everybody's talking so much? Sorry, Pat, I cut you off. Yes, absolutely. I, everybody feel like they got to fit it in to the first day. Everybody out here looking like fan guy trying to make 20 million alliances, a million, a million number twos on day one, you know, like, and we all see how that went for fan guy, you know, so I don't I know. Number two. No one ever wants to be my number two. I never, never. Have days. Been. You had days. I guess I did have days. Fan <laughs> <laughs> guy, what were you going to say? Um, I just think Nasir is gonna be the first boot from this tribe. Uh, I think Sydney showed where her alliance, her loyalty was when she ratted him out, and I think her with those two are at least half of the team, uh, which puts you know I think Heather and Nasir on the bottom of that that tribe pretty, pretty, pretty handily. I disagree. I mean, I I don't think it's gonna be Nasir. I think it's going to be a woman and I think it's just going to end up being challenge strength, which apparently only men can ever be strong at challenges. I just have a feeling that like Deshaun and Danny might be in that mindset. And so you're saying Heather's going by man. I think, okay. I mean, I, I like Heather a lot and she's on my team. However, I do think she's more likely to go first than the seer from that tribe. Like truthfully. I mean, I'm, that's what I think. <laughs> Hmm. here's our other bottoms of the bottom six mostly my people are in the bottom middle um brad david and ricard yeah um that's about right who wait who is david vote the uh, neurosurgeon whatever oh, okay. Okay. okay these are all okay. people that are on the bottom of the majority in their tribe like and it kind of showed in the first episode brad wasn't yeah, i don't think ricard actually is though he was he had the vote right i think ricard is uh i'm surprised at brad being this low i had brad in my top five um i know he ran to or he, he just he's playing an old school game which we all kind of called but it's working the man like told two people to their face that he was very likely to vote one <laughs> of them and yet who's still here brad's still here and he clearly got Shan to vote with him. That's pretty impressive. I also feel like he's just, he got out someone who's weaker on a tribe that needs challenge strength. So, and he's got to be pretty strong. I mean, the dude's like six foot seven, it looks like in like every moment. I think he's going to be safe for a while. I had him high because he's playing this old school game on such a fast paced season. And I feel like if you're going to get someone like that out, it's early and... The fact that he wasn't the first boot tells me that he's going to be a valuable number to these strategic players. Eh, I don't know. I kind of disagree. He That old school last game is going to get his old ass sent home. I don't know. You got to pick it up and like get with the times. Like you have to be cautious about what you say to who. And like, I, he didn't even see it as a problem. That was the problem for me is he like, what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I did mean, do it. <laughs> he got one vote and it was the boot. He got what like the, the only I think I don't think he's gonna get lucky every time. Like if he keeps being blind, I do think it's gonna cost him. Who voted for Ricard? Genie. 
So yeah. Jeannie voted for Rosie. Jeannie's no at the bottom. Right now. She's, She's now, got no yeah. clue what's happening. Jeannie's I think no, 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 no. I think it was a thrown vote because of the dice. I think Ricard's on the bottom. I think I think Jeannie's close to Brad and Shan, and I think that they threw that vote on Ricard because Ricard's target was Brad, correct? Right? Am I what was JD right? and then it turned it around? JD and then See, Brad. what I think happened, this is my theory. I think this was actually the plan before the vote. I said maybe JD. I think JD was on the outs, but I think like Brad and Ricard and Shen all knew. And then that's why Ricard threw out Brad's name to throw what's her name off, Sarah, from actually using her dice. That's what I think, but maybe I'm wrong. Mm. Interesting. But th- nothing about that tells me Brad is anywhere but in a solid spot. I feel like Ricard got a thrown vote because they're willing to sacrifice him if Sarah does end up playing her dice. That's red alert for Ricard for me, but I don't see, I mean, Brad, of course, old school games can always turn out badly, but I, I thought he played really, Brad had a really good week. So that's I just think Jeannie did, wasn't like clued in with what was happening. Either that or she's also playing an old school game. Beginning of seasons of Survivors, votes were all over the place because people just went in and voted. You know, they weren't like- Whoever they anymore. wanted to, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the thing, yeah, the reason I can kind of agree with maybe Jeannie just really wasn't in on anything was the fact that no one whispered to her during all of the chaos. Not a single person that I saw that they showed talked to her. So I can see that, but either way, if someone's targeting you, it's not good news. I feel like that's not good news for Ricardo. The only person who went actually genuinely went for Brad is gone. So. Mm. Hey, what are your thoughts on Brad? That's your dude. Yeah, I mean, wasn't too happy when he immediately was like, well, I don't know, because these two are being thrown around. But then I thought about it and I was like, he didn't actually say he was voting for either one of them. He said he didn't know where his vote was going and that those were the two names that he heard because of the challenge. So he said it in a manner where it sounded like he was coming after them, but it wasn't like, no Sarah I'm voting for you because you sucked today you know um not I don't think his game is awful at this point but I think the way that he's playing is only going to benefit him in these small tribals and once he or like small tribes and once they get together with more people he's going to be lost and on the bottom I see that I, I don't know man how many times have everyone here sat there and said i would rather have someone i know is coming for me than a snake and like you know if if the people in the actual game are playing similarly or have a similar philosophy brad is like not someone you're going to target early do i think that this is like a game winning strategy no but do i think this is a strategy that'll serve him well in the pre-merge Probably. You know, I can tell you though, it's just as it's like almost more anxious to know exactly who's coming for you than to have that snake. I'm sure. You would know. <laughs> yeah, you, you would. would know. You would know, Meg. <laughs> and then you get like tunnel vision, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Any thoughts on David or whatever his last name is? Uh, he surprised okay. me. I, I ranked him. He he did he he blew away my preseason expectations. He exceeded my expectations too. Which yeah, I really liked his thought process on the water carrying uh, challenge. I think he was right there, but um, I think he made the right decision at the end too to just go along with it. So that's pretty much all we saw from him. Good stuff. Do you guys have done sweat or uh, savvy? Well. It depends. Am, am I being volunteered to carry shit? Because if yes, savvy. If no, eh, you guys can go carry water all day Touché. while I go weave palm fronds. Have fun with that. It just feels like he's number five on this tribe when I look at who's left on that tribe. Because you know that Evie and Tiffany are I mean, uh, Evie and Tiffany are pretty close. They're close to Liana too. Xander seems like he fits in with that group. So my worry for David wasn't necessarily how he played, which I agree with all of y'all was way better than I thought he was going to come off. Um, it's just, I still think he's at the bottom of this particular tribe. And if they go to another tribal, he's going to be, in my opinion, for sure, the next vote off. Well, before we get to the top 10, I want to know how you all rank your top 10. Because Mike asked me and I never gave. Like I, I said, you can rank however you want to rank. This is different than Big Brother because we're not watching live feeds. We're just going 
strictly edits. So how did you all rank your top 10? Um, I just went by who I felt like was doing, who was playing the best game, who was playing a good social game, who was being strategic, the most strategic, um, and like who wasn't and causing no rifts, honestly. Like people who name was already getting thrown out there or like I ain't even gonna say trying to try trying too hard because I feel like uh Shan, she came on strong. She was doing a lot, but she I, she got my number one spot because I liked how strategic she was and I liked her little, you know, her little hum that she does when she is <laughs> strategizing. She's also like accomplishing what she's doing though. She's doing a lot, but it's working for her and it's getting things done that she, you know, she's kind of controlling things there. Mm-hmm. Well, Mike asked about the criterion we were using to rank because um, mine's different. I rank on, on strictly on who I think can win. Mm. Most likely to win being number one, which is why Brad, for instance, did <laughs> in my top 10, even though I am a, almost 100% sure that I could visualize him sitting in the jury. Like he just looks like a jury guy. I don't even know. <laughs> thing. Brad comes off as like just a typical jury character that I could just visualize being there. So I think his his likelihood of making the jury is actually really high. But I think his likelihood of winning the game is very small. And uh, so I even have some people that could be next boots that I voted in my top ten because I think they're polarizing enough where they actually have a shot to win if they could get further into the game. I rank I- on gameplay. Which is hard for me in our Big Brother rankings because I'm you guys all rank like who's most likely to win, and I finally had to like switch up the way that I was like ranking people there to follow suit because I was screwing up our ratings. But I'm ranking gameplay here. I kind of rank on like standouts to me. Like these are the people that really catch my attention that are like big characters that I can notice and who are playing well. I mean like. Uh, I mean, like I did put Vach or Vochi, Jesus Christ, I need to learn how to pronounce that, but I did put him in my rankings because he stood out to me, but he's like towards the bottom because I don't think his gameplay is that good. So, you know, it's, it's a mixture of gameplay with people I think can win with people that stood out to me. Cause like, if you're invisible, like Heather, I don't, or like nearly invisible, like Heather, I don't think you're going to win the game. Or not doing anything. These people actually like did something this episode. So who, okay. who is Vochi? Who, who is that? David. David, David the neurosurgeon oh. okay. on the yellow tribe. Okay. I'm like, who the fuck? I know. Right. I hate when they go by different names. Just go by your first name. Right. <laughs> All right. We'll get to top 10. Number 10 is Erica, who had a pretty not edit herself. But honestly, for me, that's why I had her in the top 10, because I was expecting her to be messy right off the bat, have this big personality right off the bat. So this is the best I could ask for from Erica is to play the whole lay low early and then be messy at the merge. That's that's the best idea. So good for Erica. She seems in a good spot in this tribe because she's laying low on a tribe where there's already kind of being shots fired in a few different directions. So the fact that she's kind of blending into the background, I think bodes really well for her chances to get to the merge. So I would agree with that assessment completely. Mm-hmm. There was me, Fanguy, and Alex that had her in the top 10, that got her into the top 10. Yeah, I didn't end up ranking her, but I she would definitely be one of the people I didn't rank who would be closest to getting ranked. I mean, she had a decent, she had a decent premiere. It's just that like, I, 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 from the episode, I don't know how much I can really tell you about Erica or where she sits on this tribe. You know what I mean? She was the first in the water. I yeah, like Van Guy said, I don't think she's like on the rocks of the tribe at all. I think she's doing a good job of not being the target, at least for now. And she's letting Sydney be the messy one. So, true. <laughs> well, any other thoughts on Erica? Not a lot to say because we didn't see a lot of her. Mm-mm. Kind of forgettable for me. Number nine is Jeannie, which is kind of what we disagreed with earlier. Was, did she know where her boat was going or was she just the one lost? That's what we don't know because this is what happens when you edit for blind signs all the time. In a, in a tribe of six, I, I cannot 
believe that someone is so lost that they're just throwing their vote. She knew what was going on. She, or at least she knew a plan. Maybe that plan was a fake Ricard plan, but she knew something. Someone told her something. She had some conversation. There's no way she's just out there lost. And we got some good personal vibes from her. She seems to be socializing well. And uh, as someone who's a stereotypical first boot type of person, she wasn't really even in the conversation. So props to her. That's why I ranked her. Is she stereotypical first boot type of person? Yeah. Okay. She's, she's she's an overweight she's old, older she's woman. woman. So uh, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I'm feeling like on she paper. Brad. And when Brad was outwardly talking about the Ricard situation, maybe she just knows she's close to Brad. They had discussed the plan. She thought he was being legit about what he was saying. So she just decided to go there. Hmm. I got other thoughts on Jamie. You all had her in top 10, so I want to hear why, because I don't, don't agree. I mean, I, I ranked her high because she stayed out of the drama. Yeah. She seemed to be, like, kind of good at socializing. She wasn't really having issues with anybody. She did decent in the challenge. And, you know, she's her name was not thrown around at all, even though there were multiple names thrown around. And she also wasn't the one, like, trying to call the shots and, like, you know, tattling on people. And she played it smooth, and it worked for her. Exactly. She didn't mess up. She's just one of the few people who really didn't. I mean, I I think my worry for her is this is the tribe that's like very, you mess up in a challenge, you're going to be the target. That's what it's feeling like. There was more to it than that. That's always just an excuse. I mean, not from Brad. Brad was straight up about it. He was like, (laughs) he like, that's how it go. If you mess up on a challenge, you go home. I'm like, damn. This is not There's only five one. of them now. So like even but that's why I think she could be the weakest say, link. Yeah, but say she was the one that messed up. I think that she could easily I mean, there's not that many numbers that you have to get, you know, like I think she could sway that one person to come her way. Well, she got me too. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> and your other thoughts on Jeannie? Get off my girl grocery store, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> I like her. I just don't. <laughs> Just not on high on my list right now. Number eight is Liana or Liana. Mm. I didn't rank her at all because she was honestly super forgettable. Yeah. She didn't mess up. Well, she, she, <laughs> she did. didn't do yeah, anything. She, did. she messed up on the puzzle, didn't she? Ain't she the reason no. they lost? No. I I mean, she was on the puzzle, but I don't think she's the one that messed up. Their puzzle, they were so far behind on that puzzle that they didn't really point the blame at any one person. <laughs> I had her ranked high. I know why I ranked her high. It was because I believe that Evie, Liana, and Tiffany are going to run that tribe. And she's so she's a shoe in to hit merge at this point. Yeah. The, the girls on that tribe seem to have like an understanding that the girls are going to work together without saying it at least in the edit i'm sure they said it but they didn't say it it wasn't shown to us but they seem to have an understanding where she says i love tiffany and i love uh god who who, i love evie and that they were each saying the same thing about her so like yeah she seems to be positioned pretty dang well any other thoughts on liana you guys had more to say about the bottoms than your guys tops (laughs) Well, because, know, right? because the people who weren't in my top 10 for me at least were people that i thought like literally fucked something up like they did something bad and that's why you're not in my top 10 half of my top 10 i jimmy and liana are simply there because in my opinion they didn't do anything that put a target on them which i feel like most of my people i didn't put in my top 10 did or i mean i do feel like liana is at least positioned well if that alliance actually comes to fruition which well, it seems like it is Number seven is Tiffany. Mike? A little lower than I put her. Tiffany yeah. is, uh, spoiler alert, spot number two for me. Uh, because I think you were going for your homers. Your two. I, am de- I definitely had two of my top uh, three were definitely my homers. But, uh, you know, Tiffany, 
uh, was targeted early and turned it into a 5-1 vote for the other guy who targeted her. She's Impressive. Not today, bitch. From her social skills. She didn't have to play her dice. She didn't have to find whatever the hell was in that tree. She just was herself. She just sat there and she's like, we're all vibing. We're getting along from the heart. And then 5-1 Sia Abraham because you came from Tiffany who everyone seems to love. And when everyone seems to love you, good on you. I will say uh, one negative for Tiffany to, to bring it down to earth a little bit is that uh, it seems like, uh, is it Evie or Evie? Do we, Evie. did anyone say it? Evie. Evie, Evie seemed to do a bit of the heavy lifting and keeping her around. So yeah, a little bit of that seemed to be from her. So, but still the fact that you can inspire someone to stick their neck out for you, perhaps impressive. Good stuff from the teacher, Tiffany. Yeah, her social game is obviously good. I just feel like she didn't do a whole lot to save herself, though. I just feel like she just had to, her name was already on there. She just had to deal with him, and Evie and Leanna had to do the, the convincing. She was confident enough in her relationships that she didn't play the dice. She knew she was being gone for it, but she was confident in her people, and she was right to be confident. Yeah. I had her and Leanna right by each other in my rankings because I have them kind of the same. I feel like Evie is the motor behind that alliance and the driving force that's going to take control of that alliance. And so these two, I just think they're along for, for the ride. We move on to number six, who is Deshaun? He was my number two. Yeah, you had him high, why so high? Um, I just thought he played really well, even considering he got called out for kind of looking for the idol. I mean, he's already kind of made, I think, a good solid alliance with Danny, he could possibly have an alliance with Sydney. I think that he's playing great socially. He did the water thing, got it accomplished, even though he stopped to look for an idol mid-challenge and nobody really seemed to care. So, I mean, I just think he's doing a great job. He's performing well. Yeah, not bad. I had him at the middle of the road for me. Um, I just he 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 laying low and not causing no no drama. So, which is not what I expected from him. But yeah, I literally had him at you know, like number five. So he just he coasting. He got drug into some drama and didn't even pop off or anything. Like yeah. he stayed, he stayed cool and calculated and calm about it. And um, I think it bodes well for his, you know, his chances. I do think that him, Danny, and Sydney are going to be a voting block in that tribe if they go to uh, if they go to tribals. Mm, yeah. In defense of Danny and Deshaun, uh, perhaps looking for the idol is they're doing strenuous hard labor, and let's just say they're going to take a break. It looks like they wandered over to some rocks about ten feet away to like look around like they weren't running through the jungle they were just like yeah. leisurely picking things up and looking they're just taking a break while also bonding over looking for an idol like oh yeah man i'll tell you if we find the idol like you know it, the cameraman it, over was, there. <laughs> it was i mean it i agree so awful. you have two guys that are kind of isolated from the rest of the tribe they're obviously getting along good opportunity to kind of solidify something with that other person and you're like kind of walking up and down the beach doing this distance it's the first time you're really exploring where you're kind of staying of course you're going to be like keeping an eye out we all know what they're here to do you know but looking for an idol on day one is just it's a no-no but I, game though I, sped up game go ahead Aspen yeah I was gonna say um like um I respect them not being like fucking Tony you know like how Tony would just literally run rampant through the woods and you know they just was chilling so I I agree with Mike you know like they weren't doing it in a bad way so can you be mad at them they completed what they needed to complete right uh, preseason Deshaun that is the most important thing to me if I'm on that tribe and that might be why Sydney felt the way she did like we we alluded to that earlier yeah is they did the task they did the task they don't know what we're doing at camp we could be all out searching for idols so you know Nasir was being a little bit of a bit you know a busy body here um 
which sucks because I like Nasir and I like Deshaun, and I don't like the, that they're feuding. I will say Deshaun promised this preseason that he'd be very villainous to the cameras. Haven't seen it yet. I want to see it. That's what I want to see. That's what I like to see. So fingers crossed we get to see that, and then you'll move up in my rankings, dude. It's okay, though. It's like kind of like Erica. Kind of just t- take the first few rounds a little slow, I say. I think because yeah. this tribe didn't have to vote, these people didn't get as much airtime. Like, if they sure. had to vote, you know, we might have seen a different side of Deshaun. Well, number five is Danny. Meg, he might have been your last pick, but I feel like you might have a dark horse to win this season. That's how I feel about Danny. Really? That's a bold statement coming from you, right? <laughs> that's just what I saw. He did already get called out for being a football player. He did. And that's still going to be his, he's still going to have a target on his back, but I feel like he can pull out some wins if he needs to pull out some wins later in the game. But he didn't get called out for being like a professional football player, right? I thought they yeah. just like, he was like, I played in college. And I'm like, how long is that story going to last? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I like that he protected his vote, you know, when he went up on like the hiking thing. Um even though it didn't really end up working out for him at all, but I feel he like could that's be someone what that I plays it safe, I guess. But um, and he volunteered to go too, which was an interesting move because, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't feel like you really want to be the one to volunteer for something like that right away. Um, but I think it got him a couple bonus points with his tribe. He came back, told them, he was like, "Yeah, I protected. You know, that's the kind of person that I am." So I think it worked out for him. I yeah, feel like his edit so far, he has like respect, but go ahead. Mm-hmm. Ask. Yeah, I was going to say, he just was being super respectful and like hella genuine. And I felt like that conveyed to them. They could feel like, oh, he telling the truth about what he doing versus J damn D who came up in there. It sounded like he was lying. I felt like he was lying the whole time. I'm like, nope. As soon as he opened his mouth, nope. So I I appreciate Danny being like just genuine. I could feel that realness. Um. And I think it'll get him far. It's them LSU boys. See, yeah. Danny had a really good episode, but he is like, there's no way I don't think that he wins because he's so clearly a physical threat who is well-spoken. Like, sorry, man, you're not going to be allowed to go very far. That's yeah, they, better not, they better not let him make it to the merge because I, I fear for him when it comes to them individual immunities. I, I could see him comping out. I don't know. I think if he get past the, the tribe swap is going to be the hardest part for him until like, That's exactly it. He's going to go the way of like some other pro athletes we've seen, like Cliff Robinson, who just they get targeted on a swap tribe. Or was that even his original tribe? The point is people are intimidated when you're – a strong person who seems to be pretty intelligent. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to go to seven and seven after the next two, after the next vote. I think the next episode will probably be another double elimination and then they'll probably make it two tribes or seven. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know how I feel about double elimination episodes if they're only an hour, especially. This one was fine because it was two hours, but. Oh, yeah, an hour would be kind of tight. Yeah. They wouldn't do us like that, would they? I never know. But they're speeding up that. But there's the same amount of episodes, right? I I swear I read that. Guess we'll find out. Number four is JD. He probably had the biggest edit of this episode. Bit of a mess at times, but I mean, he pulled through in the end. He was a big target and he had no votes against him. I do not. I do not like JD. I he probably is not, disagrees with you. He that is that that fucking blows my mind. Me and my friend was texting last night through the whole episode, and me and him are just talking so much shit about JD, how we want him to go home so bad. And it was so sad when he didn't go home. I just feel like he is playing a terrible game. I do not fuck with JD. I think just, he's trying to be friendly, but he just like rubbed a couple of them the wrong way maybe he you know overstayed his welcome on the log next to them a little too long so you know people were kind of annoyed with him and just he was getting bad vibes but when he got done telling them the story about the protect and risk your vote i was like so did he risk it what did he lie what is happening right now i was very confused 
I mean, it was pretty clear that he lied. I thought he was pretty talented. He was doing too much with that story. That yeah. it just seemed like he was lying about it all, even though he yeah. was only lying about the end. But it seemed like he lied about like, even he tried to put the dice in his pocket thing and in, in the tribal. He's giving me very much Big Brother super fan who comes into the game and plays a little too hard, too fast. But I mean, at the same time, it's a quicker season. That's what I keep saying. This isn't Big Brother. This isn't an 85 fucking day game. It's 26 days. Mm. True. Any other thoughts on JD? Big personality, you know. I, I could I could definitely see him going really far or I could see him flaming out very soon. It's it's hard to tell. He couldn't even do that little hike up that hill. No, but he was leading the whole way. <laughs> he told his tribe he was leading the whole way. <laughs> he was. Until he fell down. <laughs> he was still leading. <laughs> Wait, when they were zooming in on his face and he was like looking exhausted, my mom's like, oh my God, he's going to get med back. Like they're going to, like he's done. <laughs> he's going to collapse. Like look at him. Mm. That's not the greatest sign if he's gonna he's gonna have to pull the Aussies that he was talking about because I feel like if he's his target's so big he's gonna have to win some comps. I just feel like he's really close to uh Chantel, who I think is gonna be running the show there. And those two being close, I could see both being, you know, both very well for him. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead on to tell you it's a black thing. Um they 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 bonded over being black and it is gonna be hard to break that up. Sadly, I I know. Um but she need to kick his ass to the curb. I don't know. She might be savage enough to vote him off when she get when she see fit. I could see her being savage. And she is savage, savage personified. Her. Who are we kidding? <laughs> she claims we've got to see it in action now. Okay, Meg. Okay. She, she seemed a little bad about voting out Sarah. She felt bad. I think that's what the vibe I got. But I mean, she still did it. So she did it though, didn't she? She did. But we shall move on to number three, which is Xander. Wow. A little, little high for me. Xander had a good episode. Hey, he doing good. What you mean a little high, Nick? He's on a bad try for him. I didn't I didn't even put him in my top ten. So y'all must put him super high. Really? Six. I just think he's on the bottom. Sense. Him and David are on the bottom of that tribe. Like they just are. They're, they're they just are. They but are. I don't think he's first boot from that tribe. No, and they if they're only gonna have maybe one more tribal before they merge with new players, I think he's gonna. I think he'll survive that. Yeah, he nice enough. He friendly enough. He a bro enough. You know, like he young. He'll he'll make it. Wearing his two thousand dollar shoes out onto the island. Is that what happened? I missed that. Uh, well, he, it, it, it wasn't shown to us through the editor or anything, but okay. uh, from what I've seen, those are some very expensive shoes. I don't know shit about shoes, but apparently those are some real expensive ones that he wore out there. To and guy called out he was rich. Huh. Yeah, I'm pre- I, I I thought that mentally when I when that when I was reading about that and, and fan guy, it's like. You called that man. You called it. This guy's like secretly a millionaire and someone who wears a two thousand dollar pair of shoes out onto the island. He He's might be on the right track. Player. He might his, be wealthy. Just another piece of inappropriate survivor clothing. His job is app developer. People who make some of these apps ball out of control so hard. And he's like, I'm into antiques, bro. You're 21. And you're into antiques. Yeah, I'm you're into rich, antiques. Bro. You're fucking. You're. I'm not, I'm not even close to rich, and I'm into antiques. I got a whole <laughs> shelf of antique glassware right back there. Oh, okay. Now I see the shoes. Okay, now it's all starting to make sense. Yes, the very <laughs> expensive shoes. Um, yes, he is rich. Yes, everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think Fan Guy called it. I didn't see anyone else call him that preseason fan guy you're a you're a prophet on this guy he he is he is wealthy wow, and that is, people pick up on that rich kid rich pro, people can know. play survivor too okay the kid had a good episode he has an extra vote leave him alone no that, down with the rich i only want to see people barely making it by win survivor i don't need to see which <laughs> app developer win another million <laughs> true and that's how everybody has though. a chance that's how yeah. people on the show feel too. Like if, if yeah. they found out or had an inkling of that, he probably yeah. won't win if he makes the end. He probably ain't getting the votes to win. A hundred percent. I would be pissed off if I found out that he had a lot of money, and I would 
probably you know target him for that as well too but yeah yeah we're we're trying to and discriminate you want to pl- go play survivor if you're a millionaire who cares that's true but just know we gonna target your ass and try to get you out so no i expect you to fully like donate the money or do something great with it if you should win mm. yeah i believe xander would donate it to like habitat for humanity he wouldn't spend it on a ferrari <laughs> He wears anyone who wears two thousand dollars shoes isn't donating to charity. I'm no. sorry. <laughs> what? No. No, really. Why not? We, we don't. People, if you're spending that much on clothing, you are not giving back to other people. Hey, you're, you're, if you're I'm living. a millionaire, I'll spend whatever the fuck I want on my shoes, yeah. but I will also okay. be a very giving and generous person. True. <laughs> and, and to be fair, so I'm going to be walking around in some Chanel and Louis Vuitton. Yeah. To be fair, my broke ass spend $400 on Jordans all the time. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's a normal thing, you know, like it's not that out of the way. So. Some people like shoes. Okay. But to Survivor. Yeah, not not to Survivor, not to Survivor. You know, it's like it's like wearing Yeezys out there. You know, like it's like, why? Fucking why, yo? Just to show off, though. That's what it is. You know, like if you can afford it, I wear my Jordans like once a year. So like, uh, just and it's only on special occasions. But if you can afford to get them shoes, fucked up on Survivor, yeah, you stack, bro. I feel like he is a show off. I feel like he comes back to the tribe and he's like. I got an extra vote for all of us. Like, he's like, this is our tribe. Like, he tells them that he's getting an advantage because he really, I feel like this guy really wants attention and really wants to be liked. Uh, I don't know if it's that, or I don't know if he just playing their asses and he doing a good job. He that's is- a double-edged sword, though. I feel like telling everybody about your advantage could, like, either really help you at a tribe swap or it can make you easy to throw under the bus at a tribe swap because... I feel like he he's doing he's pulling an Alex from this most recent season of online survival where he's like, yeah, I have this advantage. It's gonna help. It's gonna help us. You know, he did. He, I don't he's more so pulling a days from your guys this season when Days was trying to say he had an advantage to help you all, and you still wanted him out, Mike. So, and I was right. I was right too. <laughs> yeah. We'll move on to number two, which is Emmy. Nice. Oh. One. I have her and Chantel neck and neck, but uh, same. same. I, I love the way she played this episode. She controlled the vote on that tribe. She kept Tiffany out of the fire. She has cemented herself at the top of the pecking order of that particular tribe. Uh, and she's done it smooth, like smooth criminal style. So like, what's there not to like about, about uh, Evie's gameplay? Yeah. Uh, she was my number two, like thing I said, right behind uh, coming in after Chantel. So I definitely was happy and um, impressed with how she played. And I, I don't know. I just I think she's doing a really good job representing for us and our community. And um, yeah, I appreciate that. She had a I great. Just put her. Mid- oh, sorry, Mike. Go ahead. No, sorry. Go ahead. I put her like middle of the road, but only because I felt like day one for you to be like kind of going that hard to save somebody's ass that isn't trying to save their own ass. It's, it's like, I just thought it was a bit too much for this early in the game. You think it could make her seem as a leader? You know a little something about that, right? And yeah, it can. And we all know that leaders are targeted right away. You know, if you're too big of a personality, you're the one kind of controlling things right away. I mean, that could come back and bite her. I mean, I'm, I'm trusting her read as like a, a armchair player survivor. I'm trusting her read on the island, this PhD seeking Harvard uh, person. I'm trusting her ability to read the game and the fact that she sat there and she said, okay, if we go with strength, we get rid of Tiffany. Who's the next weakest person? Probably me. Probably not Liana, probably not any of the guys. It's going to be me. I'm not setting myself up to be the next boot if we go to tribal. Uh, I need to save Tiffany to save myself. This wasn't an act of charity. This was Evie coming out there, 
and and doing it for her own good and i think it was absolutely the right play and i'm trusting her read on the situation That's okay true. mike okay I like, I like that thanks thanks for that yeah any other thoughts on abby she's still killing that shit. <laughs> Well, that brings us to number one, Chantel. Pretty much by far the number one. Yep, she got my she number one spot. Episode. That's really the really only reason I put her behind Evie on my personal rankings was because um, it, it's because of the dynamic of her relationship with uh, Jaden. Because I can't, I can't tell. I can't tell, like, for sure. Like, it feels like Chantel's in control of that tribe. But the fact that JD was kind of left out of that vote or didn't, he felt that insecure going into that, I don't know. There's just more question marks for me on that tribe than there are uh, on the the Evie tribe. Yeah, the edit did not do it justice because I was very confused. That's why I didn't know. for Because Ricard voted right, so that's why I thought he knew the whole time. And then, yeah. But Chantel had a great episode. She's obviously, and she's just a good personality. So it's hard to not rank her number one after this episode. Yeah. yeah. I thought she was going to come in and play it safe. Um, I barely can tell she a pastor, to, to be honest. Like, she if said I, she wasn't going to be that kind of pastor in this game. I And I love it. I can tell she definitely did a great job. Um, yeah, she just she just seemed like such a cool, normal person person and she very personable i would want to talk to her i want to be up under her ass if i was out there you know so i could see it also she was kind of locking it in with everybody too she was and and, and it was clearly working yeah I mean, she got away with the other unlike jd right sarah's looking at her like uh should i play my stuff we had we saw scenes of brad saying well, it's going to be one of you two. And then a, a minute later, he's on the beach with just Shan saying, no, we're, we're through to the end. We're through to the end, you know? So, and again, I don't think Brad's much of a liar. So I feel like she has him wrapped around the finger. Speaking of the JD Shan connection, when JD's coming in on the boat at the very beginning, he says there are three things that are really important to him. I don't remember exactly what it was, but second or third was faith. And then Shan faith, is a pastor. Family survivor. Yeah. Faith, family survivor. And Shan is a pastor. Prob- they're probably both uh, in Christian religions because we saw the cross and, and the word pastor as opposed to something else. So I'm going to take a wild guess and say they have that connection going for them too. So I, I, yeah, I can see why they're close. Any other thoughts on Chantal? The winner of the season. I mean, I, I picked her first overall. I'm very <laughs> happy first with overall. that. I will say, though, it's hard to play her kind of game and win the game, you know, very mastermind-esque. And that's the edit she's getting, too. I would I'd rather see, I'd rather root for the mastermind than, the, than like, the, the well, archetypes that time. I really feel like it comes down to that final tribal. If they're able to correctly articulate in a way that resonates what they did in the game, then... That's a W. That's yeah, absolutely. If you're able to go in there and articulate properly the way you played everyone and own it, then you know you you got a shot, and I, th- I think she has a really good shot. And she has a hell of a life story, which is why I loved her so much in the preseason. I mean, if she gets the final tribal council, I can't. I I feel like she is a shoe in to win the bigger problem i think i mean it's it's the second episode upcoming but the bigger problem is going to be getting there only three yeah. people this whole cast can get there i can't tell if she's just going to be this this absolute force that everyone's afraid of and gets rid of or if she's just going to successfully run the game because it, it takes a lot of skills and varied skills to play a mastermind but i think she's got the she's got the toolkit to do it let's see how her execution is and to be uh, uh to be honest, it hadn't been a black female winner since uh I'm pretty sure Vesepia. Yeah. Uh, so it we kind of we kind of do for one. So I could kind of see it. I could see it. She better get to the end with other women then, because you know the show likes to vote for men as winners. So what, yeah. what once they every 36 do. seasons, I guess. I'll second Mike's sentiment. If she ends up in that final tribal, she wins with a bullet. <laughs> She's going to win with a bullet if she's there. 
point. I think it's too early to tell. Yes, a little too early too, but (laughs) I do think there's the entire game left to play. Where I think her, her, we don't make can't visualize her telling the story about her MS and all the, you know, and how she was able to play this whole season without anyone knowing about it or something like that. That's t- done. It's done. She, I mean, my, she, she was, sorry. Go my only worry is her edit because I just feel like, other than Tony, nobody's really seen this much as a favorite in the Wednesday game. Oh. Tony did in KE on, and that was about it. And Tony won twice. So, spoilers. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> 15 years later <laughs> it's been like two since the most recent one yes that's true but... <laughs> oh yeah he did win that one that we had to do like video chat style huh <laughs> interesting well any final thoughts overall no i'm excited for the season me too all right. Well, until next week, that is our rankings for now. Chantel, Evie, Alexander, the top three for now. I just want to say two, two of those are mine, so. <laughs> we know. <laughs> but Alexander's a little too high, so I hate to break it to you. Agreed. <laughs> too high. <laughs> and Jeannie shouldn't be in the top ten, so that's all I'm going to yes, say. Yes, she should. <laughs> until next week.